Alright, so in this video we're going to be finishing off uh, the targeting systems, we're going to be adding weak and strong, and then we're going to add a player economy, so like uh, putting implementing money, so there's actual strategy that has to be involved into our game. So first we're going to um, add in weak and strong targeting, so we don't really have to do anything but go into Visual Studio now. Okay, so in our tower targeting class, all we really have to do is just copy over our first code here and create two separate cases for uh, weak and strong, so three could be strong and uh, four could be weak. There, so we can label these with comments. Strong, weak, and first and strong, what we're going to do is just paste our uh, first code here and get rid of the first line, and all you gotta do is just get our, where is it, enemies to calculate. So, uh, here, down here, we're going to do enemies to calculate, index it with our index variable and our function, and just get their health. And we'll check if it's greater than the compare value. And after that, we're going to simply take our enemy's health again and set that to the compare value. And we can copy this over to our weak code and set it to less than. So yeah, that's really all you have to do to uh, set up our strong and weak. Now, uh, when we are setting up our job in our uh, get target function, uh, we're going to implement cases for the uh, two um, weak and strong um, targeting methods. So uh, case three, of course, will be strong. So we can put strong. And this can be go to case one. And for case four, this will just be a go to case uh, zero. So there you go. Now we have completely finished off our targeting systems. Now we don't have to touch our tower targeting class anymore. And now back in Unity, we're finally going to create our player stats class. So this will store our player's health and money. So in the player folder underneath classes, we're just going to create a new C Sharp class and call this player stats. And now back in Visual Studio, uh, we can just get rid of our update method. Our start method will be used to initialize with our player starting money. So um, make this private. And now what we're going to do is create a serialized private field. And this will be our player starting money. So starting money. And now we're going to add in a private, uh, oh, it shouldn't be flow, it should be int. There. Now we're going to add in a private int variable, and we're going to call this current money. And in our start function, we're going to set a current money to our starting money. And now we're going to create a function that will allow us to manipulate our player's money. Um, add money. And this will, of course, take an integer of uh, money to add. And we don't need to make a, um, a subtract money function since uh, if we want to subtract, then we simply make our money negative in our add money function. And in this function, we just do current money plus equals money to add. And yeah, that's really it for our player stats class for now. Later, we're going to add in lives. But now what we have to do is go into our tower behavior class. Behavior there. And we're going to add in a public int of cost. So public int, and this can be called summon cost. And we could default it to something like a 100. And now in our tower placement class, we're going to check for our player stats to see if we have enough money or not. And in order to do that, we should probably um, create a public uh, int and just do get money. And this can simply just return our current money. All right, now the player stats class is complete. Now back in our tower placement class, we are simply going to check for our money and see if it is greater than or equal to uh, the summon cost of the tower we want to place. So first thing we're going to need to do is create a reference to our player stats class. So uh, we can quickly create that here and call this our um, player statistics. And we can move this up above their camera, space it out a bit, there. And now we could take this in the spot where we set our tower to place. This is the function that is mainly called when we click on the buttons. We can do a get component on this tower and get its uh, summon cost. So we could do int tower summon cost equals tower dot get component. And this will be the tower behavior dot uh, summon cost 
and all you have to do is uh, put this in an if statement so we do if uh, player statistics dot get money check if it's greater than or equal to our tower summon cost if it is then we simply place down a tower but if it isn't then we, we then we could just tell the player uh, you need more money to purchase a and then we could just add in our tower dot name and there you go that is um for placing uh, towers now what we need to do is go into our uh, game loop and in he in the game loop we're going to um, we give the player money for every time a tower or an enemy is damaged uh, based off of the damage so if we do five damage then we give the player like five dollars or something like that and in order to do this we're going to need to get a reference to our player stats once again so in our game loop manager underneath our private set of cues you can create a private player stats reference and we can call this a player statistics and in our start function we could do player statistics equals find object of type and pass in our player stats class. And in our part where we apply damage to our enemies, so in our damage enemies part of the loop, um, every time we subtract our total damage, we are going to um, add that money to the player. So we'll do player statistics dot add money, and for the money to add, we'll do the current damage data dot total damage. We could just ignore the resistance. Oh, and we also have to cast this to an integer. And there, that now that is adding on money to uh, the player every time we damage an enemy. And one more thing, back in our tower placement class, um, in the part where we check for um, uh, the player's money is greater than the tower summon cost, uh, if it is, then we're just going to subtract the tower summon cost to our player statistics. So we do player statistics dot add money, and we'll pass in negative tower summon cost so we're subtracting and I believe that should be it for the functionality of money in our tower defense game so far uh, later we're going to be uh, working with selecting towers upgrading them and switching their targeting types that's for another episode uh, for now we're just going to stick with uh, getting money every time we damage an enemy and losing money every time we place on a tower oh and we would also want a way to uh, display our money to the players so they understand uh, the resources that they are working with so uh, we're going to go back into Unity to set that up, and we can just go into 2D view, go to our player object here, go to its UI canvas, and we can add in a new empty game object, and we can call this money display. And in here, we can put in uh, an image, just set it to half transparency over here, uh, put it at black, we could change our uh, money display, or image in the money display set this to stretch on all sides and now we can change our money displays width and the image underneath should stretch to its size so we can set the width to something like 400 maybe even 500 and just set the height to something low so like uh, 60 that should work now on our image we can just rename this to money display background and underneath this we can put in a text uh, element we can call this uh, money text and of course we're going to set this to stretch on all corners and we're going to set the alignment to the center and of course it's going to be set to uh, be on the left side and we can put in a little bit of an example to see how it's going to look so uh, dollar sign blah, 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 blah. oh okay there now we can to mitigate this from happening I doubt it'll ever happen since I do not think any player is going to get uh, this monstrous amount of money. Uh, we could just turn on auto size. So that should yeah, eliminate that from happening again. Even lower the minimum size to like 1. And with this uh, new UI, we can just apply the changes to that. And now back in Visual Studio, we're going to get a reference to our money text and change this accordingly to our money. So. Let's go back into Visual Studio for that. And underneath our player stats class, we're going to create a serialized reference to our text mesh pro UI. So text mesh pro UGUI. 
and of course we're going to be using TM Pro and uh, this will be called let's call this money display text and now all we have to do is um, set this to our starting money so money display text dot set text and we can use string interpolation for this since I kinda like it this way so I uh, use a dollar sign we're gonna put a dollar sign inside two brackets and in here we're going to pass in our starting money and we could just also take this line and put it into our add money so every time our money is changed um, the text will update and there you go now um, that should be it for the player economy so uh, if we go back into unity and set up some tower prices so in the prefabs underneath our towers uh, yeah, the summon cost for a basic tower, I'll keep it at 100. For a flamethrower, I'm feeling a price of around $400. A laser, um, I guess, uh, 600 And a missile launcher could be like, uh, 350 And for the trade-off, we should probably lower the damage to something like 3, so it's not too OP. And... Yeah, this should be good now. All right, now on the player, uh, we're going to add in our uh, player stats class. So we can just put this on our player, and we're going to assign the display text, and we're going to set the starting money to let's say four hundred, four hundred dollars. And one more thing, we have to set our player stats onto our player statistics reference on our tower placement class. Once that is done, apply prefab changes, hit play. And now if we place down a tower, we should lose some money. What? In our uh, player stats class, instead of setting the text in our add money to our starting money, we set it to our current money, not our starting money. There, now it should be good. Now instead of um, uh, removing money uh, when we actually click on the button itself, we should probably remove the money when we actually finalize the placement of the tower. So what we could do is just... Uh, go to our update method and where we click mouse one and uh, the physic checks box uh, is has passed it passed the checkbox test then we can actually subtract money here we can do a uh, negative current placing tower dot get component tower behavior and dot uh, summon cost there and actually instead of uh, running two get component calls we can actually just store a reference to one, so we could do tower behavior, call this current tower behavior, and this will be set to this line, and then we could pass this in into these two lines here. Okay, so now every time we finalize the placement of a tower, we will lose money. Okay, so if I just place on a basic tower, there, now every time we finalize it, we do lose money. So this episode isn't really much, but if you learned something new, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.